Brighton Beach Busking presents Harris, Sadie, Goran, Chris, Mike the Mike. Welcome to the Busking Break. I know, I'm so excited to be here. Oh, I'm good. How are you? I'm good. The show where we interview your favourite Brighton Beach buskers, finding out the stories behind the musicians that sound our streets. I've done with all these people together, have I killed everybody? <laughs> like stressing out, like, oh my god, what am I going to do with my life? Rah, rah, rah. Make sure to subscribe and hit that notifications bell so you do not miss an episode. So come with us and be part of this journey. Hello and welcome to the busking break here at the Works Pier. Today we spoke with Sadie Haller. It was a great conversation and I hope you enjoy it. Sadie. Hi. Welcome to the busking break. I know, I'm so excited to be here. Oh, good. How are you? I'm really good, thank you. How are you doing? I'm, I'm good. Thank you for asking. Good, that's okay. Okay, so singer-songwriter originally from Exeter. Yes, in Devon. Tell us about your journey as a musician. When did you start? Why did you start? And how did it kind of lead you to here? Yeah, so I've always loved music, as have my mum and dad. My mum and dad are really into their music. They kind of grew up, well, I grew up listening to a lot of David Bowie, like we were literally just talking about. Awesome. Um, Leonard Cohen, my mum loves, who is an amazing lyricist and amazing writer. Uh -huh. um, and also quite a lot of bands like Pulp and Squeeze, who okay. are kind of Britpop, but also just, again, really good with their lyrics when you kind of, the music's amazing, but when you take the music out of it, it's, they're so good at telling stories. So I've always grown up listening to lots of amazing storytelling in music. Mm -hmm. And I started kind of singing lessons when I was eight, but I only started songwriting when I learned how to play the guitar. And that was when I was about 15, 14, 15 okay. years old. Nice. And actually the first thing I ever did was go out and busk. And that's how I got my confidence. No so I always used to busk in Exeter on the streets. I never do my own stuff again. This would all be covers, but it's a such, it's such a good way to kind of build up your confidence if you've never done any music before or never played to anyone. So yeah, so started busking and then from there it's always really lovely when you kind of start talking to people on the streets and from there I managed to get a few gigs and interests and kind of build up my social media pages and yeah, that's like where, where it's all started really. Wow, yeah. so it all started kind of busking in Exeter. Yeah, and then now busking in Brighton, yeah. which is amazing. So how did the transition between Exeter and here kind of happen? It was, yeah, it was good. I mean, so I, we were just talking about how I go to the University of Brighton uh -huh. and I don't actually do um, music, I do textiles. So okay. it's a bit different, but still creative. And I was always set on Brighton because coming from Devon, the seaside is mm -hmm. Like, I've got to have it. Yeah, so got to be near it. I've got to be near it. So, yeah, so Brighton was definitely the place I was going to be. The transition, um, I moved back in September 2019, and then obviously in March 2020, mm. that was when oh, the yeah. pandemic happened. So, um, from September 2019 to March 2020, I didn't actually do much music. I didn't really get out busking. Then I went home for the summer and COVID. And mm. then when I came back, um, like August time 2020 that's when I kind of did a lot more busking which I'm so pleased that I've done it it's, it's just been so amazing in Brighton so cool yeah how does um, busking in Brighton compare to Exeter yeah it's really interesting I mean as surprising as it sounds Exeter's pretty good for it like uh -huh. it's really interesting but Brighton is amazing because you get so many different people and you also get a lot of people coming down who just love Brighton and the amount of conversations I have with just some incredible people here mm -hmm. are so lovely and I think that people in Brighton love their music mm -hmm. and people in Brighton really appreciate kind of like individual artists and kind of aspiring artists and independent artists as mm -hmm. well so it's it's really lovely and it's always so nice when people come up and ask for a card and get a cd and everything like that i think it's really well perceived in brighton i haven't tried the seaside yet though i need to go oh, really? i need to go near where the upside yeah. down house is because that's that's where i want to go i've been doing a lot of busking in the north lanes which is incredible but for the summer i need to do a bit of busking by the beach. For sure, when mm -hmm. the sun's out and everyone's down on the seafront. Yes. I think it's a really good place to be. So tell us, um, you've done 
lots of festivals, you've been played on the BBC a few times. Yeah. What's been some of like the highlights of your music career so far? Oh, that's a really good question. Um, some of the highlights, so yeah, like I've done a lot with BBC Introducing, I've done um, also a live lounge for them, which wow, was incredible. So cool. Yeah, that was a few years ago. Um, I always love playing at festivals, like festivals are just an amazing one. There's lots of lovely cute ones down mm -hmm. in Devon as well, because there's so many great fields mm -hmm. to do to do some great festivals in. Um, yeah, festivals are amazing. Um, I always love going and doing support slots as well. They're mm -hmm. always wicked. You know, Eddie Reader, the, she's, um, she, uh, she's the, like, it's got to be. Okay, yeah, of course. I, I supported know her, yeah, okay, which was amazing. Awesome. That was really good fun. Oh, wow. Um, and yeah, just, I honestly, like, the my favourite sort of highlights and my favourite times are just summers filled with festivals mm -hmm. and gigging mm -hmm. i just think that that's always a great one that's kind of music for you is it yeah definitely that's it's just really like cool. i it's always the best to just go to festivals anyway and then to play uh -huh. at them and to get a free ticket that is a highlight that's yeah a highlight yeah, as yeah. Well. get to play and get to go for free yeah ultimate combination yeah definitely what about in busking have you got a story of like a particularly crazy busk, something that happened that, that's particularly memorable, good, maybe bad, maybe? Yeah, I was thinking about this. Um, like, again, because there has been so many amazing things which have happened, again, just people kind of like speaking and like oh. coming up and talking. And you also get loads of really random things in a busking case. I don't know about yeah. any of the other buskers who've been here, but um, once I had... The most random thing I've ever received was like a glass jar full of yarn, wow. like knitting yarn, which okay. is great because I love to knit, but wow. it was really random because obviously they wouldn't have known that yeah. I enjoy knitting. But yeah, just to receive a, a glass that's jar so of yarn. Yeah. Especially because you're studying textiles like that. Yeah. A, that's obviously a, you know, something a thing you're which pursuing. Connects, but, so. um, that was a few years ago as wow. well, so I, they wouldn't have even yeah. known anything. But, wow, yeah. a sign. A sign, yeah. A sign from the universe or yes. something. That's incredible. So this is a question that we've been asking all the buskers, and you can be as deep or as literal as you want. What is music to you? <gasps> oh, that's a deep one, isn't uh -huh. it? Um, I think music to me is it's expressing myself. Mm -hmm. I think... It's always good whether like I may be upset or if I'm extremely happy, it's always really good just to like be able to pick up my guitar mm -hmm. and express myself through lyrics and through songwriting. I think that is what music means to me. But also not only that, it's kind of like I really love how many people you meet with music and the connections and I was speaking to someone the other day about this. It's not like it's like a nine to five job where you see mm -hmm. the same people all the time. It's like you're constantly meeting different people and you're constantly meeting different people who have had such different lives mm -hmm. and such different perspectives on everything. And I think that is, in itself is really inspiring just mm -hmm. to hear other people's stories through music. So I think, yeah, that's, it's really important to hear that from mm -hmm. everyone as well as to express yourself. It's really well put. Like the, the community that is music, it's kind of forever changing. Yeah. But also kind of stays the same yeah and it's so nice to kind of keep those connections with people like there's still like um people who i've played with before and it's still so nice to be able to message them uh -huh. and just to, also to see what they're doing on social media like that's so nice and like yeah for, so music is just kind of seeing what other people are doing and then yes yeah, expressing myself with songwriting too that's so well put really really well really well said um so i've seen that you've been featured in certain youtubers Oh my goodness, like this. how could I not say that yeah. that was the highlight? Of course, so that how completely... has that happened? What happened oh there? Oh my goodness, 13 year old me was <laughs> fangirling. Well, 21 year old me was fangirling as well. But um, yeah, so that was just before Christmas. So Alfie Days and Zoella, uh -huh. who I've always loved. And yeah, since going to school and everything, I'd always watch their vlogs and their YouTube videos and was always there like since they started going out. Um, but yeah, so just before Christmas, I um, noticed, I like recognised a guy who had his camera out uh -huh. and he was kind of like filming. So if I was stood there, he was kind of like filming away and I was like, who is that? And then I was like, 
oh my goodness, it's Alfie Days. And um, he came up to me and kind of started chatting. And I was like, trying to keep, keep my cool yeah, a little bit. I was like, oh my goodness. Um, yeah, and, and I, I have a card machine. So when uh -huh. I busk, it's like, obviously people can put in change, but you yeah. can also kind of, it's a tap to tip. Yeah, yeah. And they are incredible. It's a really good mm -hmm. way to kind of, because nobody has cash anymore, uh -huh. or hardly anyone. For sure. Um, so anyway, yeah, he... I was like, this is incredible, like what a good idea to have a car machine. And I was like, yeah, thank you. Um, thanks so much. And he was like, you sounded awesome. Um, and then, so he went off and then I saw, I recognized Zoe and she was with her baby. And then she kind of went off and then they came back together one way. And I was like, oh, that's nice. That's really cool. Like they waved and everything. And then they came back again. And then Alvi had his camera out and Zoe came up and like, he was filming her putting some money in the wow. case and then I was on both of their um, well I was on Alfie's video first and a few people messaged me about it and in his video he was saying again like how good the invention was um and then uh, like a few weeks later I started to get quite a lot of followers Ooh. and I didn't even realize and then it was like Zoe's put you on her video as wow. well and it was really nice because it was actually quite a long clip mm -hmm. where you could see my name mm -hmm. in my busking case and um yeah, like that was just incredible. It was such a high that I could not. Yeah, that is definitely my highlight of busking. So I can't cool. believe that I didn't. Yeah. I didn't say that. It's so thank so you so cool. much for reminding me. Oh no, I think you can't ignore it. Like I think it's really cool that they, you know, acknowledged you and and then put you on the video, not just you know. I know. Appreciated it's so it. Nice. They obviously were just appreciating the music anyway. Yeah. I think that's really cool. And then to put it on their channel because you do see like a few people who you kind of recognise from like. TikTok mm. or social media and then they're like quite quite big and mm -hmm. still quite big influences in Brighton so yeah to like not only for them to kind of appreciate the music but for them to put it on the vlog like means a lot definitely. Yes. Shout out to Alfie Days as well. Yes! <laughs> okay so how about um, what's your favourite song to busk? Is there a song that you oh. just love to play? Yeah um, that's a really interesting one. I think that so I, d I do have quite a range of songs which I play and normally I start with some more songs which maybe like my mum and dad associate with because I feel like Brighton kind of gets up late, you know, the shops don't <laughs> open until like 11, 12. So I normally get there in the morning and then um, I do like kind of Crazy by Patsy Cline, which I love, and then people will come up and say how much they love it. And again, Leonard Cohen, So Long Marianne, and it's really nice that, like, in the morning, a lot more people will appreciate those songs. Mm -hmm. And then as it gets to the afternoon, I'll kind of do, like, Valerie, mm -hmm. um, and what else. I love doing Girl Put Your Records On and stuff like that, because then it's that's when um, maybe tourists and also people who live in Brighton are just kind of, like, exploring a bit more. And that's when people kind of sing along as well, so... All of those songs are good fun when people sing along. That's so cool. I love how you're tactically like, you're like these are the wake up songs. Yeah. Let's ease everyone in. Oh, like, 100%. Really, it's got yeah, to be done. It's a great tactic to kind of like, and then the party starts in the party afternoon. Party starts, kind of thing. yeah. <laughs> That's so cool. <laughs> um, is there anything for you musically that you like would like to do? Is there like, uh, any goals, anything in the future that you'd... You know, I mean, you've been featured on Zoella's vlog and you've done some like cool festivals yeah. and whatnot. Is there anything that you'd like to do? Any kind of ambitions or do you yeah. just kind of go? I mean, so at the moment I've just been saying that I'm in my like last few weeks of textile. Okay. So yeah, I, I specialise in print. So that at the moment has kind of been taking over a bit more compared to my music. But as soon as I'm out of uni, which is in May, um, I really want to kind of focus a lot more on my music and release some more, uh, release some more songs, which I've got planned mm -hmm. anyway. Um, and it would be amazing. I've never been like on tour. Mm -hmm. I, I did um, a few support slots with a band called Sound of the Sirens who are based mm -hmm. in Devon, who I love and they're really good mates of mine. And um, we played um, a few a few gigs together, so we I kind of did like a mini tour with them, which was awesome. great fun. But mm -hmm. I'd love to do like a UK mm -hmm. tour where I can just travel because mm -hmm. I think as well one of my main goals like is to travel with my music. I'd love to do that mm -hmm. um, because because once as well I um I went to Australia 
And cool. I went to Melbourne and I had a mate who lived in Melbourne and she was like, let's try and get you a gig. So I did a gig in Melbourne one time, wow. which was amazing. And that, like, that's just what I want. I'd love to travel with uh-huh. my music. And also as well, maybe to get a band behind me, because at the mm-hmm. moment it's just me and my guitar. Mm-hmm. So um, yeah, I'd love to release some more music, which I've got coming up. Uh-huh. And then also touring and getting a band behind me. So cool. I think that travel and music, just yes. art in general, it kind of like, there's some a sense of an adventure in music, right? Yeah, so, so it kind true. of goes hand in hand. Yeah. It's so cool. How, how was the gig in Melbourne? Oh, it was great fun, <laughs> yeah. yeah. It wasn't, it was more kind of um, at like a bar, but it was great oh. fun. It was really nice to do. I was a bit jet lagged because I think it was like, I got in... Um, on like the first day and I think that gig was like day three or four so I was still a bit like it was still the middle of the night yeah so it was still like such (laughs) a different place and like oh my goodness this is crazy but yeah it was it was really amazing I wish I could have done more Uh, um, that's so cool okay there's a question we've been asking uh, the other buskers to Mm. do you think in Brighton that maybe the council could do anything to help buskers yeah, um, I mean, I think that it is really good that you can just go and busk. Mm-hmm, I think it's sure. good that you don't have to have a license mm-hmm. or you don't have to apply anywhere. I think that that's one really positive thing. I, I, I'm, yeah, I'm not too sure whether the council necessarily could help with that, mm-hmm. I guess, because already it's quite freeing yeah, for, for sure. buskers. Mm-hmm. Um, I yeah I I honestly I'm not thumbs too up. sure yeah it's I think good. thumbs up I yeah, think yeah. Brighton has done it well I think um, it's just more I I need to know where where to bus because yeah, like sure. there's places where as soon as like a, a clothes shop or somewhere closes down then that's where I'll perch uh-huh. but then as soon as somewhere else opens at that spot I'm like oh, I don't know where to go uh-huh. Uh-huh. Um, but no I think that the the council have done have done a good job but I think as well like. Um, Brighton busking which you guys are doing like it's such a good idea and it's so nice to you got for you guys to promote um upcoming buskers oh, as well. thank you yeah. thank you we appreciate it do you have any advice for maybe young musicians people who want to pursue music or maybe even want to start busking yeah I mean busking 100% I did a gig um last Friday at uh, Western Superman mm-hmm. and a guy came up to me and was saying that his daughter's 16 and she's doing loads of songwriting at the moment but she didn't really know how to kind of get started and I said you know what busking is how how I started it's really good learn a few covers um, at first and then you can kind of just kind of keep playing them because obviously it's going to be so many different people but learn a few covers get out busking get like a little battery operated amp which is great, you can so easily get them for second hand on eBay um, because then that's when you'll speak to people and then your confidence will be boosted and then um, like I was able to meet people where I was able to get gigs and people wanted to listen to my music and people wanted to buy CDs so if you already write songs and definitely get a CD pressed because that's always good, people do love love a CD, if they have a CD player still that is, um, and also get get some cards, get some business cards as well, as that's a really good way to promote yourself on busking. And I think as well, always write your name um, on your guitar case, because people, if people are just walking by and take a video, like Zoe and Afi did, uh-huh. then it's, yeah, it's, it's an great. easy way to kind of, yeah, uh-huh. 100%, so I think they're, they're kind of awesome. the advice I'd give. Great advice, see, go busking. Um, what have you got coming up? Uh, let the people know what's like what's to come. Um, yes. And then also let them know where they can find you. Yeah, so I'm going to be doing lots of busking Woo. in Brighton. <laughs> um, and I'm really looking forward to a summer of music. It will be great. I've actually got, um, so on the, oh, when is this? It's not the 16th. I'm going to have to work back from a Monday. <laughs> um, for, I think it's the 13th, uh, Friday the 13th or Thursday the 12th. I can't remember what date. But I'm playing at Cafe Nero in Brighton, oh, cool. which is um, which will be amazing. It's at 11am. So per- what a perfect nice. combination to nice. have a coffee yeah. and to do a gig in the morning. Oh, cool. um, and that's in the lanes. So I've got that coming up in Brighton. Um, also, I've got a love song to Brighton, which I wrote. I wrote that back in the first lockdown when I moved back down to Devon, as I was saying earlier. And as much as Devon's beautiful, it made me realise how much I miss Brighton. Mm. So I wrote a love song to Brighton, 
which should be coming out very soon. And um, to find out about that release and then also with all of my other music and just my social media, my name is Sadie Haller, which is S-A-D-I-E. H-O-R-L-E-R, -E and you can find me on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, and all of that, all of that stuff. Awesome. Thank you so much for being on the bus. Thank break. you, I really loved it, and I'm really excited to take my mug home as Woo. well. <laughs> Thank Cheers. you. Cheers. <laughs> Thank you for watching the busking break here on the Brighton Beach Busking YouTube channel. If you haven't already, then please click subscribe, like this video, and hit the notifications bell so you know when videos have been posted. Go and check out our busking guest. All their links are in the description. I have been your host, August Radio Project. If you're a musician, creative, and you like challenges, or you need some tips and tricks, then go and check out my YouTube channel, also linked in the description. Thank you to Works for welcoming us to the Works Pier and believing in the project. If you're a creative looking for workspace in Brighton, contact Works through the details in the description. They offer co-working, craft space, sound studios, offices, meeting rooms, and more. Also, thank you to Mug Time for the wonderful mugs. You can find the link to their Amazon shop in the description below. And thank you to you for watching the busking break. And I'm sure I will see you in the next one. Thank you.